All right, so today we're starting with um, set spread 7B, and 7B is pretty straightforward. It's, again, just continuing our understanding of social psychology, and today we're looking at how we judge and perceive others. So how do we make judgments of people in our social environment, whether that be our friends, whether that be our family, whether that be strangers that we've never met before. So basically what we're looking at today is the factors that influence how we judge and perceive others. And a lot of this knowledge is kind of like general knowledge. It's kind of like common sense, but we're basically putting names or labels to these concepts now. So the first thing that influences our judgment and how we perceive other people is person perception. The second thing is stereotypes. And the third thing is prejudice and discrimination. So we're going to look at these topics today um, in spread 7B. So the first thing is person perception. Now, if you remember from the previous um, topic that we looked at, which was sensation and perception, we know that perception is basically a judgment. It's how we make sense of something. So in other words, person perception is how we form impressions, or in other words, how we make sense of other people, okay? So if, you, if a new person comes to school, okay, you might basically... Um, you know, get a first impression from them. And from that first impression, you make a judgment of that person. If they come into class and they don't even knock and they just barge in, you might think that they're not very polite. Okay, you might think that they're not very responsible. So basically, person perception is how we make sense or how we understand or how we form impressions of people, okay, or a person. All right, that's basically the, 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 that's basically the main aspect of our social environment there. So person perception, if we're going to extend that definition a little bit more, it's basically how we make sense and how we make sense of something is influenced by how we think about that person, how we make judgments of that person. And remember, our judgments can be positive or negative. So I could say she is impolite or I could say he is irresponsible. On the other hand, I could say she is, um, you know, she is very talented or he is very considerate of others. Okay, so judgments can always be positive or negative. Decision-making ability. So how you make decisions about someone. If you get a bad vibe or a bad impression of someone in, in the beginning, that might influence your decision of whether you want to actually go and um, pursue a friendship with them further or whether you want to actually go and talk to them and introduce yourself. All right, so that's decision-making ability. And a lot of the time when we see someone and we make a judgment of them, we also draw conclusions about them. And sometimes those conclusions are unfair conclusions or are unwarranted. For example, if someone comes um, late to a Zoom session, as a teacher, it's not fair for me to say, oh, that person is always late if it's just a one-time instance or a one-time occurrence. Okay, so drawing conclusions, those conclusions we draw about people and their personalities are not always 100% accurate. Okay, so that's basically what person perception is. And there's an example here, if someone is constantly losing their belongings, okay, you might judge them as being careless or irresponsible or reckless. And if they ask to borrow maybe your pen or your exercise book or your textbook, you might think twice before actually um, giving that thing to them, okay, based on their past kind of record of who they are and their behavior. So that's what person perception is, okay, how we perceive or how we make sense or judgments of other people around us. Um, now, a lot of the time person perception is influenced by how we see other people behave, but it's also influenced by physical appearance. And although it's sad, um, as humans, you know, we do look at superficial things like appearance. And remember, this is not only about how someone looks like physically, whether someone looks gorgeous or whether someone doesn't look gorgeous. It's about also how you present yourself. So um, for example, if you look at this picture here, um, one man's dressed up very neatly, whereas the other man is, you know, um, has very kind of, you know, he's wearing flip flops and his um, clothes look very shabby. Okay, so again, it's how you present yourself. That's a big part of physical appearance as well. Now, research has shown that when people are shown a conventionally attractive looking person, they will associate positive qualities to them. Okay, so when you see someone that's conventionally or typically good looking, that is someone who would be considered good looking all around the world or in most parts of the world, you think that they're a good person as well. And this is something called the halo effect. Um, in the old textbook that we used to use, halo effect was a huge topic, but in your textbook, for some reason, it's not. So we don't actually go into it in a lot of depth. But just for your knowledge, it's called the halo effect. And the halo effect um, has a huge influence on a lot of things, um, especially if you look at things like social media, people will see someone who they think is pretty or is attractive, 
And if someone says something bad about them, like, oh, this person, um, you know, did this or this person, you know, um, said bad things about, you know, this celebrity or whatever, people might not actually believe that because they can't imagine that person as being anything but angelic, okay, anything but good. And that's what the word halo effect comes from. Halo is basically that thing that... Um, I don't even know what, how to explain it. That thing that angels have, okay, in cartoons and stuff. So basically halo effect is this idea that when you have someone that's conventionally attractive looking, um, you know, you associate only good qualities to them. Um, no. So you will not be tested on the halo effect as a terminology because it's not in your textbook. But this, to this dot point here, the idea that someone that's physically attractive will be judged as having equally positive characteristics or personalities is something that you can be judged on, but not the actual term halo effect, okay? But this is basically this, if that makes sense. All right, so that's basically first impressions from physical appearance, okay? And just to give you a real life example, I guess um, when Taylor Swift first came out and she had this, she, you know, obviously Taylor Swift is pretty, um, and, you know, she had this, she had all these kind of like labels attached to her, like, oh, she's like so nice. She's so friendly. She's the girl next door. And then when she got into all that drama with all those other celebrities a few years back, um, a lot of people who were her fans were kind of like completely outright, like rejecting these ideas that she could be manipulative, that she could be, um, you know, like two-faced and that kind of stuff. So again, sometimes we do see someone's, um, physical appearance and if they've got a very kind smile or they've got a very friendly or pretty kind of face we might not accept that they can have negative characteristics and we know as humans everyone has negative characteristics okay so that's first impressions from physical appearance now first impressions can also form from non-verbal communication so the kind of things that don't require someone talking to you but you can just judge them from a person's body language so we're talking about things like a person's facial expressions we're talking about things like eye contact and eye gaze we're talking about posture we're talking about gestures okay and other bodily movements so even how a person dresses or presents themselves um, it's nonverbal, okay? It doesn't require someone speaking to you. You can make a judgment of a person from the other side of the room just by what they wear or how they how they um, present themselves. If they're coming to a really important job interview and they're dressed up really shabbily or they're not dressed up really well, um, you know, you will make, if you're the employer or you're the CEO of that company and you're interviewing this person, you will make a judgment about that person even before they open their mouth to speak. And that's what nonverbal communication is. The kind of um, impression that you leave just by your body language, just by your mannerisms, okay? So for example, a person who, when you're telling someone like a funny joke and they're not smiling or they just have a neutral expression on their face, you might make a judgment of them as being kind of like very, a very serious person or a very tense person because they didn't even smile, okay? They didn't even bat an eyelid when you were telling them a really funny joke. Okay. Um, similarly, if you're trying to speak to someone or you're confronting someone about something that's happened and they avoid your eye contact, that might be a clear sign that they're lacking in confidence or that they feel intimidated by you or that they don't want to talk to you. Okay. And that might make you more suspicious that maybe they were the person behind whatever happened or whatever you're confronting them about. Um, also gestures. Okay. Um, giving a thumbs up. Okay, I sometimes do that in class. And I'm like, okay, is everyone good? Thumbs up. Like, you know, that basically means, are we all good? Are we all on the same page? Are we all understanding this? Okay. Um, someone who, in some societies, that's what it means. But in other societies, the thumbs up is actually quite offensive. It's quite rude. Okay. So again, nonverbal communication is also dependent on what culture you come from. Um, in Australia, for example, eye contact is very important. Okay, it's very important to look at the person who's speaking to you. But in countries like Japan, if you were to, if you were a student and you were looking your teacher in the eyes, your teacher would probably tell you to get out of the room, or your teacher would probably tell you to, um, you know, would probably get you in trouble because it's actually considered rude and disrespectful to look at your teacher in the eye in those kinds of countries um, because it kind of shows like you're on their level or that you're on the same kind of standing, whereas the status between a teacher and student in those countries is quite um, different, okay, and it needs to be acknowledged by the student there. So that's basically showing you nonverbal communications and how we can make judgments of people based on their nonverbal cues. 
Now, there are also other concepts related to how we judge and perceive other people. Okay, and some of these we already know, most of these we should already know. Um, stereotyping is one of them. So stereotyping is when we fit people into one category based on what we think we know about them. And stereotyping is basically a type of generalization that we make. When we stereotype, we take all the people, or all the members of that group, and we basically paint them with the same brush. Okay, that's what a generalization is. Now we know with stereotypes, stereotypes can be positive, And those are the stereotypes that we generally don't get offended by too much. They're the stereotypes that generally don't um, aim to uh, berate or condemn one specific um, you know, group. But then we've also got negative stereotypes and negative stereotypes are more problematic because they can actually lead to increased prejudice and even increased discrimination later down the road. So stereotyping is grouping or fitting people into a category based on what we think we know about them. Okay, it might not always be 100% accurate. And that's important to remember that with stereotypes might not always be 100% accurate. So one example is, um, and a really popular example is that Asians are good at math. Okay, Asians are good at math is a popular stereotype. We see it shown in all kinds of TV shows and all kinds of cartoons um, and all kinds of, you know, just general, even if you watch stand up comedy and, you know, you've got an Asian guy who's doing the, um, Uh, stand-up comedy he'll always talk about you know something like oh his parents expected highly of him in his studies or you know that his fellow students um, kind of treated him like a human calculator so Asians are good at math is a really common stereotype what the problem with that stereotype is it doesn't it's not negative obviously being good at math is not something that's offensive okay it's something good um, but the problem is that it kind of puts pressure on people like if I'm an Asian and I'm not good at math it might put undue pressure on me to feel like I'm not good enough or that I'm inadequate. Okay, so it might not always apply. Again, might not always be 100% true. We know that there obviously are Asians in the world who are not good at math, okay? But the stereotype kind of makes it look like every single Asian that is born into the world will be a maths whiz by the time they're like five years old or something. Okay, that's one specific stereotype. Another stereotype um, often thought about by people in other countries about Australians is that Australians have kangaroos in their backyard, which is obviously not true. Not all of us have kangaroos in our backyard. And we certainly don't just like jump on a kangaroo and ride it around like it's a horse. Okay, that's not what happens. But that's what people think happens based on what they know about us or based on what they see about us in TV and stuff like that. Um, also, we've got gender stereotypes, okay, so things like, um, and gender stereotypes are problematic because they do lead to a lot of sexism, okay, and prejudice in, in that aspect. Um, so things like, you know, females should be in the kitchen, that's a gender stereotype, a harmful one. Um, males should not show emotion because they would be seen as weak. That's again a stereotype, okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to put females and males into like little pigeonholes or boxes where there's a certain thing that we think they can do and they can't really move from that. That's what stereotyping is. Um, just in the chat box, let's um, maybe you guys can maybe mention one example of a stereotype that you are familiar with or that's common. And then just so we've got a few more examples there. So I'll just give you guys about like, yeah, 20 to 30 seconds now, just any stereotype, okay, that you are familiar with or that you know about. Okay, Lebe is being rich. I like that. Yeah, one. yeah. yeah Muslims are terrible. <laughs> um, blondes are dumb. Yep, that's another one. People who wear glasses are smart. Yeah, exactly. In fact, I had a friend in school who literally had 20-20 vision, um, but she kind of like got her optometrist to make those um, glasses that don't have like lenses in them, like the glasses that, not prescription glasses, just the ones you wear for like display for fashion. And like she said that, oh, I want to wear it because it makes me look more intellectual. So yeah, that's a good one. Muslims are terrorists. Yeah, that's another issue. That's a problematic one. But yeah, that is true. Okay. Yes, Black people, African-American people, yeah, are thugs or criminals? Yeah. And that's a lot to do with the, um, the Black Lives Matter movement as well. And, you know, the police brutality that those people experience. Yep, yeah, that's good. So we've got a lot of different um, stereotypes there. But yeah, as long as the stereotype groups or fits people into a specific category rather than acknowledging each individual person of that culture, that would be a stereotype there. Okay, um, so 
moving on from stereotypes, we're looking at prejudice and we're looking at discrimination. Now, a lot of you would have heard these words side by side in normal life and everyday life, but you need to know the difference between the two. Now, prejudice is your negative feeling or your negative judgment that you have towards people of a certain group. Now, this is important to remember. Now, if you remember the tri-component model, prejudice is like the affective component, okay? It's the how you feel about a person, okay, or how you feel about a group. Usually with reference to prejudice, it's a negative feeling, okay? And this is why we said negative stereotypes can actually cause prejudice. So that one about, you know, all Muslims are terrorists or all blondes are dumb, that can actually lead to prejudice feeling towards blondes or towards Muslims, okay, or towards African-Americans. So that can lead to prejudice. So that's why we say negative stereotypes are problematic because it can lead from a harmless stereotype to a more serious form of prejudice there. Now, prejudice is a negative feeling or judgment, and you hold that inside you, but it might not always be obvious, okay? So you hold it inside. It's an internal thing that you um, hold or that you have, but it's not obvious on the outside. When it becomes obvious is through this thing called discrimination, and discrimination is basically this idea that um, I'm taking those negative feelings and judgments that I once held inside of me and I'm translating that into actual behavior. And actual behavior is the B component of our tri-component model, okay? And as if you would remember, when we talked about behavior, we said people can actually see that, okay? That's obvious, okay? We can actually see, those are supposed to be eyes, okay? People can actually see that negative behavior occurring. So when you project negative behavior towards a particular group or towards even just an individual who belongs to a specific group, you are showing discrimination, okay? Now, in today's society where obviously discrimination is shunned, where you can't just exclude someone on the basis of their skin color, like what used to happen in America and in all every country basically, um, you know, 40, 50, 60 years back, with discrimination, we have to remember that discrimination is not so common today. It happens, but people are people think twice before discriminating because they know that they'll be called out uh, called out about it. They know that um, it'll go onto social media. They know that they will be shunned for it. Okay, prejudice, on the other hand, is something that everyone holds, and we're going to talk about how modern prejudice is actually hidden inside people, and people are actually less likely to. Um, to talk about how prejudiced they are because it's something they hold inside. But the minute that someone discriminates against someone and shows actual behavior, that can actually cause them to, that can actually make their um, negative feelings or behaviors more, sorry, not negative feelings or behaviors, negative feelings or judgments more obvious. Okay, so prejudice is the feeling. If you're feeling and that negative judgment you have is so strong that it then leads to behavior, that becomes discrimination. So I'll give you guys an example um, with reference to, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement um, and, you know, the police brutality. So obviously if you're a policeman in America and we're not saying all policemen have this view, but let's say you're a policeman in America and you are really, you have these really kind of like um, negative feelings and negative judgments. So you've got a lot of hatred, a lot of resentment, a lot of hostility towards African-American people. You hold those feelings inside of you, obviously. You don't show them outside. Um, but the minute that you have this opportunity to arrest um, an African-American young person, okay, let's say an African-American man, um, you know, you are very, very, very violent. You basically smack them against the wall. You basically put the handcuffs on them and you don't even need to slam them to the ground, but you do it. That's discrimination. That's making it obvious to everyone around you that you do have these negative feelings and judgments. And it's not just inside you anymore, but you can see that person, how they're treating this African-American person that they've arrested. Okay, so that's basically um, the relationship between prejudice and discrimination. Remembering not everyone who, show, who has prejudice will necessarily show discrimination, okay? A lot of people are very good at hiding um, their prejudiced views. And like I said before, in current day society, people don't generally show discrimin um, discriminatory behaviors because they will be called out for it. Okay, so this is the idea. This is the relationship between stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination. So stereotypes is the idea, okay, again, Stereotypes are not necessarily negative or bad to begin with. They're just ideas, all right? They can be negative, but that doesn't mean they'll always lead to prejudice. So I could say 
People with pink hair are mean, okay? You've met a few people in your life. They've had pink hair. They've been really mean to you. They've given you a really negative attitude, whatever. Okay, that, that's basically one thing. So people with pink hair are mean, okay? That is the basic idea there. Prejudice. Now, prejudice is when that stereotype, which is negative in nature because being mean is not something positive, um, turns into prejudice is when that idea translates or causes you to develop a feeling okay towards people with pink hair I don't like people with pink hair or I hate people with pink hair or I resent or I despise people with pink hair okay that's a feeling now that's an emotion so you um, have this emotion towards people with pink hair now if you hate people with pink hair enough that can then lead to negative action against someone with pink hair. So you could say, I am not going to let anyone with pink hair sit next to me at lunch. So let's say a new girl joins the school um, and they've got pink hair and then obviously, oh, not a pink hair because it's a Muslim school, maybe a pink hijab, we'll say, okay, and they join the school and um, they want to sit with you or there's a spare seat next to you at lunchtime on your bench or whatever. And you say, no, you're not allowed to sit here, sorry. Um, that's basically discrimination because now you've acted on your feeling that you don't like people with pink hair. So you're actually excluding that person. And that's something everyone can see. Everyone can see you rejecting this pink haired person from sitting next to you at lunch. Okay. So that's discrimination. That's the action. Okay. So you need to understand in a scenario, for example, what is, what is a stereotype, what is prejudice and what is discrimination? Okay. So that's the basic um, difference between the three then. Okay, now, as I talked about before, and this is a really simple concept, um, we've got two types of prejudice, okay, prejudice is obviously a negative feeling or judgment that you have, but the two types are old fashioned and modern old fashioned prejudice is what we saw in the olden days, that's why it's called old fashioned, okay, what you saw in the olden days in Australia, in America, in literally every part of the world, it's when members of a majority group, like people who are the majority in that country openly and publicly reject a minority group okay and their prejudiced views are actually like just downright obvious to everyone so for example um you know in in africa you know um in um america back in the olden days they were extremely and obviously prejudiced towards african-american people so they'd have like sections of the bus um, dedicated to people that were African-American compared to white. They'd have waiting rooms, as you can see in this picture here, waiting room for colored only. Okay, so basically they, it was very obvious and the, uh, the prejudice there was very um, clear to see. Today in mod what we call as modern prejudice, like I said before, it's more hidden. It's harder for us to judge. People keep it inside their heads, but they don't really express those um, prejudices or those negative feelings that they have. They just keep them inside their head. OK, so that if they are to express such prejudices, they'll do it in a way that's more likely to be accepted within wider society. So, for example, on the outside, a white person might agree with the idea that, yeah, I believe African-Americans have the right to do anything, everything like everyone else. But inside, they're like, I don't think that they deserve those rights. I think my 20 year old nephew deserves more to work in this place than this 40 year old African-American person. So they still deep down don't. 100% agree with what they say, but they say it to be accepted in society because they know that they will be outcasted or shunned or called out if they were to say otherwise. So that's the difference between old fashioned prejudice and modern prejudice. And with discrimination, we know that it's negative behavior. And this negative behavior can be translated into the three isms. Okay, the three isms are racism, sexism and ageism. We already know what these are from our general knowledge. Okay, racism is when you show discriminatory behavior towards uh, members of a particular um, racial group or ethnic group. Um, when you show discrimination towards men or women, it's called sexism. And when you show um, discrimination or negative behavior towards someone because of their age, that's called ageism. Okay, and ageism is a big issue in Australia and all over the world. Um, and you can see the data here that says 82 percent of people experience one or more forms of everyday ageism in their day-to-day -day lives and that's just people among the ages of 50 to 80 so not even that old but starting from 50 people do start to experience signs of ageism from others okay so that's the idea okay ageism is this idea that if i want to work in the workplace and i'm maybe 
let's say 48 or 50 years old, um, the employer might overlook me for a more younger candidate, okay? And there's a lot of ageism, even our attitudes that we have towards old people, things like, um, you know, oh, this person wouldn't be able to go to the gym, they're too old, they can't lift the weights or something like that. That's ageism at work there, okay? Even though it might not seem that cruel, um, our thoughts or our ideas that old people are less than everyone else um, is a form of ageism, okay? So that's basically the three types of discrimination or the three isms, racism, sexism, and ageism. So you need to know what each of those are and you need to be able to, if we give you a scenario, you need to be able to say, okay, sexism is happening in this scenario or racism is happening in that scenario. Okay, pretty straightforward. And the last thing we're looking at for today is indirect and direct discrimination. So um, the two types of discrimination, and again, this is similar to prejudice, how one is more public and more obvious, and the other one is less obvious. Direct discrimination, as the name suggests, is direct. It's obvious. It's really clear. Okay, so direct discrimination is when someone is treated unfairly or unjustly because of feelings or thoughts that surround their identity. So let's say a teenager applies for a job. Um, they might not get the job because most people think that teenagers are unreliable or irresponsible, okay? Or maybe a person who's old is not hired for the job because of their old age, okay? Because they're not as young as all the other candidates that are, that are applying, okay? Maybe someone's not um, allowed to, you know, apply for a job because of the fact that they've got a disability, okay? That's direct discrimination. And that's to do with that person's identity, okay? Or even a person's not hired for a job because they wear a hijab or a head covering, okay? Or a turban or whatever it is. Um, that is basically that idea that that's direct discrimination. It's directly targeting that person, okay? Um, and obviously, whenever this happens, people do bring it up with consumer rights and people do bring it up with um, the ombudsman and all those boards, because um, that is illegal. You can't just reject someone based on that. You can reject them based on the fact that they don't have enough qualifications, but you can't reject them on things to do with their identity, their race, their cultural background, their marital status. None of that is applicable or relevant when you um, are applying for a job, okay? So that's the basic idea of direct discrimination. It's obvious, okay? People can see it there. So people can actually see that discrimination occurring there. Indirect discrimination is a little bit different. Indirect discrimination is a little more subtle and it's done in a very smart way where you're still disadvantaging or singling out someone, but you're doing it in a way that makes it look okay and legal. Okay, what this means is if I'm an employer and I don't want someone in my, someone in my workplace to wear a hijab or to wear a turban to work um, or anything like that, I might actually put up a board or I might make a rule in the um, policy, the policy document saying that, okay, from this, this date, um, no one in this workplace is allowed to wear head coverings or sunglasses or any kind of headwear um, due to safety reasons or due to security reasons, okay? There might be some truth in that. Obviously, if someone comes into work wearing a motorcycle helmet and you can barely see their face at all, that could be an issue. But again, what they're really doing is they're making that rule or they're enforcing that rule to disadvantage maybe the two or three Muslim women that work in that workplace, okay? Similarly, um, in a university, if you're asking all people to use the stairs to access classrooms in um, a university building that's got different levels, you're obviously disadvantaging those people with disabilities, okay? So even though you're not directly going up to the person with the disability and saying, you're not allowed in my building, by making that rule and by not uh, having ramps and all those uh, accessibility features in the building that allow the person to, you know, be able to easily go up levels like elevators and lifts and all that stuff. What you're really doing is you are indirectly disadvantaging or singling out that one or two, that one person or those two people that have disabilities or that do use a wheelchair. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Direct discrimination is obvious to see. Indirect discrimination is more subtle. It's a more sneaky way of disadvantaging or singling out a group. Direct discrimination is when you don't, you're not even trying to be sneaky, you're just directly saying, no, nah, you can't get the job or no, we don't accept people of your kind here, okay? Obviously this happens less commonly in today's society because of the fact, similar to the reason for old fashioned prejudice versus modern, people don't wanna be called out for this. And obviously this can lead to big issues 
if we see it happening a lot in the workplace. This happens more because this can be done in a way where you can go back and cover yourself and you can justify yourself. You can be like, well, we only put up the board because it was security reasons. What's the big deal? We live in a dangerous world. So you can always go back and cover your tracks. Whereas with dis uh, direct discrimination, um, it's less likely to happen because people can't cover their tracks when they do that, okay? All righty, so that's basically, um, that's basically, yeah, 7B done. So what I want you guys, oh, before we finish off, are there any questions about any of the topics that we've gone through um, today? If there are, just put them in the chat box. Yes, it is related to the concept of fairness and equality as well. Yeah, correct. So um, again, it is sad to say, but people of, um, people of minority groups, people who have disabilities, whether that be a mental disability or a physical or intellectual disability, they are they do tend to be mistreated in society. Even if you're an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person, you are um, mistreated compared to you know, other cultural groups or other groups then. So um, yeah, it is to do with the lack of fairness and lack of equality that we have in society as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Um, I suppose if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to assume you guys are all good. So I'm just going to stop the recording here.